Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com, and this is my take on the current state of full-frame camera systems from Nikon, Canon, and Sony. At this point, all three of them have out their full-frame mirrorless offerings, and I don't think we'll see any new cameras from Nikon or Canon, but it is possible that sometime in 2019, Sony may drop a new camera. Now, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna take a look at what each of these companies has gotten right so far, as well as what I think they need to work on for future releases. Of course, I can't point every little feature out, so if there's something you would like to add to the list, go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Let's start with Sony. We all know Sony has had a major lead in the mirrorless game. They've been at it for the past five plus years, constantly refreshing their lineup, updating their firmware, and releasing a ton of new glass. We also know, prior to releasing their current three cameras, I wasn't exactly a fan of Sony. The truth of the matter is, their full-frame lineup from top to bottom is packed and loaded with every feature you can think of, with very little left out. The a7 III is probably one of the best options for anybody starting from scratch. The price is right, the features are beyond right, and it's simply an all-around fantastic camera. Now, the a7R III gives you everything you love about the a7III and tosses in a higher megapixel sensor. The a9 is still the only game in town when it comes to pro-level action cameras. Couple that with the latest firmware that pretty much reinvents the already fantastic autofocus system, you basically have a refreshed camera. And let's not forget about the one battery grip that fits on all three bodies without any issues. Now, I'm not sure what Nikon's gonna do for their high-end sports camera, but something tells me they're gonna end up using a similar Sony-made sensor to what's in the A9. Now, let's talk about glass for a second. Sony has put a ton of G Master glass out to make a lot of the pros much happier. Happier. And finally, IAF, the mind-blowing, game-changing, best-in-the-industry feature that I personally fell in love with. As you can tell, Sony has a lot going for them that is right. Now let's take a look at things that I think they need to change. All three of their bodies are getting a little long in the tooth. The saving grace, though, is that they match up really well, if not better, than what the competition has just put out. Not to mention their bodies were the first out, so they most likely will have something newer and better way before Nikon and Canon can make their next moves. The EVFs and touchscreen at this point are lacking in comparison to what Nikon and Canon are using. But on the flip side, Sony probably makes the EVFs that the other guys are using. Now, I think it's time for the bodies themselves to change. They're small, they're compact, they're light, which at one time was a major selling point for mirrorless cameras. Now I know this is gonna upset some people, but the bodies simply do not feel great in the hands, especially after using the EOS R, the Z6, the Z7, and even the Olympus EM1X, or whatever the hell they call it. Now with bigger and better glass comes less of a need for smaller, lighter bodies. With a bigger body, I would like to see them switch to two XQD cards, which is honestly the cards that they developed but never put into their consumer cameras. But with those two XQD, if they make them compatible with CF Express, which is the future, that's what I would like to see in those bodies. There's also been a lot of talk about the size of the E-mount and what, if any, limitations might come from that. All I can say here is that Nikon and Canon both went with a much larger mount and they have to have good reasoning for doing it. One reason could be that with a larger mount, they have more freedom in creating better lenses since they can make the back elements of the lens is larger. Now we've already started to see these changes with Canon. Look at the 28 to 70, look at the 51.2. You're not seeing that glass coming out on Sony. Now I think that it's easier to make this more interesting glass on the Canon and Nikon side because of the larger mount. And Sony will contest that and tell you that they can still make large aperture lenses, but it's not about that. The G Master line, yeah, they're making the lenses that we've seen on other cameras for years, whereas Nikon and Canon are starting to innovate further because of their new mounts. Now remember, if I didn't mention something on the list that you think should be listed as a change or something you like, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Let me cut in here real quick and let you know that this video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're looking to build your own online portfolio, use what I use for jaredpolem.com. Go to squarespace.com slash Fronos photo to get a 14 day free trial. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code Photo at checkout to get 10% off 
your first order. Now let's look at where Nikon stands today. They've put out two full frame mirrorless bodies and a few lenses, but still have a pretty long way to go. Now here's the first things that I like. I really love the feel of the bodies in my hands, though I would have preferred something much larger. The image quality on both the Z6 and the Z7 are fantastic, and I seem to reach for one of those instead of going with my D5. The F to Z adapter works perfectly with the lenses I've added to my bag over the years. This means that most people making the switch to the Z systems won't have to drop any money on new glass yet. Not that there's much for them to buy yet anyway. The overall build quality of the bodies are very good. They feel substantial in the hands, and in my opinion, better than the Sony's, which will piss off some Sony people, but we've already talked about that. They've added in-body stabilization, which is fantastic for stills and handheld video. And speaking of video, I can no longer say that Nikon's autofocus for video sucks because it's actually really good. The Z6 has found its way into being one of our go-to run and gun cameras when we're out filming. Now, one of my favorite things about the Z system is the EVF. The EVF is massive, vibrant, bright, sharp, and another reason why I choose this over taking my D5 when I'm looking to go on a shoot. We're actually using the Z6 to record this right now with the new 51.8 Z. The autofocus is accurate. The focus points like most mirrorless cameras extend pretty much to the edge of the frame. And overall, both the Z6 and Z7 are solid offerings. Now there is something I do need to tell you is that I've been shooting Nikon since the mid 90s so I definitely am heavily invested in that system. Here's the bad in no particular order. Nikon has yet to release pro level Z glass that should have been there at launch. Yes, they launched the S line of lenses, which are very good, but they are not, in my opinion, pro level glass. What they should have done is what they did with the launch of the D3. Release a 14 to 24 2.8 and 24 to 70 2.8. And for the Z system, they should have added a 51.4 or 1.2 at the same time that they released the bodies. Instead, they announced the development of a 58.95 manual focus lens, which is basically pandering to the oldsters who are aging out anyway. Now, what is aging out? It means they're super super old and trying to live in the past. Not to mention, it's going to cost an arm and a leg, and did I mention yet that it's manual focus only? We all know that it has one card slot. How do you build a new camera with one card slot knowing that your competitor has already squeezed two cards into all of their cameras? I'm looking at Sony here because we know that Canon hasn't done that. Whatever Nikon does next must have two XQD card slots or CF Express compatible slots because CF Express is the future. The autofocus is very good except for the fact that it's slower than Sony and Canon's mirrorless cameras. There's no touch to drag AF, which is causing me to miss shots since moving focusing points is super slow and outdated with just the joystick. There's no IAF yet. Even when they release it with the firmware update, I doubt it's gonna come close to being as good as Sony's. There's no grip of any kind available to allow me to add a second battery or shoot vertically. So basically I'm fighting with the camera when I need to rotate it this way to move focusing points to shoot the pictures. It just causes more issues and I miss more shots. And, and by the way, Someone needs to be or should have already been fired for that oversight. And finally, there's no top of the line pro body to compete with the A9. I want a mirrorless D5 and I want it I want it last week. I'm sure they're working on something, something to replace the D5, which is probably a D6, which is the last of the DSLR big ass bodies. So if I had to guess, we're not gonna see a pro mirrorless camera to replace a D5 style camera, until sometime in 2021. Since we're talking about camera gear, if you're looking to buy anything new or used or possibly sell some of your old gear for cash, head on over to adorama.com fro. When you go to that link and purchase something, it helps us to continue to make the videos that we make. So again, go to adorama.com fro. And finally, we get to Canon, who got the body size of the EOS R right. They went bigger, they gave us a vertical grip, and they gave us a camera that feels like a camera in your hands. They didn't pussy out and go with something super small because it was mirrorless. And they also gave us an EOS RP, which for its size feels fine, 
But for this section, I'm gonna focus mostly on the EOS R. Now like Nikon, the EVF in the R is fantastic. The flip out rotatable screen is a welcome feature for people who are always bitching when the camera lacks one. Though personally, 99% of the time, I leave it set in home position, which is just the screen seated on the back of the camera. The autofocus is super snappy and accurate. It's much faster at acquiring subjects than Nikon and may be even on par with Sony's speed. The image quality is similar to what you would find in the higher priced 5D Mark IV, thanks to it having basically the same sensor with an updated processor. And let's not forget about the RF mount and glass. Canon has so far crushed Nikon, and in some ways Sony, in the new lens department. They've given us a 51.2 that's amazing, a 28 to 70 f2 that's sharp, fast, and expensive, though personally, I wish it was a 24 millimeter. There's the EF adapter, which lets you seamlessly use all of your EF glass. And coming in 2019, we got the Hebrew Trinity and two 85 1.2s. What the Canons lack in the body department, they certainly make up for in glass. And I think they're signaling to Nikon and Sony that they're here to win, and they're not going anywhere, even though they're taking a while to get out some pro bodies. Now onto the bad with Canon. They built a camera without IBIS. How do you build a camera without IBIS when basically every manufacturer is building all of their new cameras with IBIS? The current IAF is pretty much unusable and will need to get at least 100 times better before it reaches what the Sonys can do. Like Nikon, how do you build a new camera and not include two card slots? It just doesn't make any sense. Remember how I said Sony doesn't dumb down their cameras and includes many of the same features in their cheapest bodies as well as they do in their most expensive? Well, Canon likes to dumb things down. There's no full frame 4K shooting and you're stuck with a massive 1.74X crop. Now, if Canon wants to keep everyone else from jumping ship that already jumped ship, they'll need to give the users the ability to shoot 4K full frame. Right now, the EOS R is not ideal for shooting action photos. Not only is it slow in the frames per second department, it also replaces the blackout with a split second preview of the image that you just took, which kind of gives you a herky-jerky feel when you're trying to track the subject. Sony, on the other hand, can do 10 frames per second without a problem on the A7 III. And to wrap this up, where's the pro bodies? Where's the higher megapixel camera? And where's the 1DX style mirrorless camera to compete with the A9? Now, I think Canon can do this. Canon can get this stuff right, but as of now, they focused on glass. In closing, it's a much more interesting world now than it was a year ago. A year ago, Sony owned the full-frame mirrorless world. Now that Nikon and Canon have showed their cards, what will Sony strike with next? Will they listen to the suggestions I had above, or will they stay the course? Will the smaller mount ultimately become a bigger issue even though they will tell you it's not? Will they ever come out with the A7S III? That's a question that a lot of video shooters want to have answered. Has Nikon and Canon stopped the bleeding of users jumping ship? Like here's what I think will happen. I think Sony will not change their body design to move to a larger, better feeling camera. They will continue to invest heavily in software and algorithms, and they will slowly come out with new glass. Nikon will keep most of their existing user base, but will find it hard to get the new photographers to buy in. Remember when I said they're aging out? Yeah, not many new people or younger people are jumping on the Nikon bandwagon. They will eventually get out their pro-level Z glass, which I do think will ultimately be better than Sony's due to the larger Z mount itself. It feels like Canon's plan is to get out a ton of pro and unique RF glass in preparation for future pro still bodies and RF ready video cameras. I honestly think Canon is the sleeper in this race right now. A lot of people have been saying Canon is dying, but Canon is huge and they're making a massive investment in the glass and then they're gonna get the pro bodies and people are gonna stick with their Canons. This is just the beginning of the new camera arms race. Who's going to win, who's going to lose, and who's going to go the way of Kodak? Well, only time will tell. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If there's something you wanna to add to the list, something you would like to see, leave it down below. 
So thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.